Hello everyone, welcome to another video and this time we'll be talking about a laboratory test called the sugar water hemolysis test. Sugar water hemolysis test is a laboratory diagnostic examination which is performed as a screening test to detect if red blood cells are fragile or easily destroyed because they cannot withstand the swelling when they are placed in a solution containing sugar. This test is useful for the diagnosis of PNH or paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Aside from this, hypoplastic anemias and hemolytic anemias with unclear causes may also be detected. Other names for this test is sugar water screening test, hemolytic anemia sugar water hemolysis test, and PNH sugar water hemolysis test. The sugar water hemolysis test operates on the principle where patients with PNH will have red blood cells who are highly sensitive to the attack of the complement system. Therefore, these red blood cells will undergo hemolysis or they will be easily destroyed in a sugar solution. This test enables the differentiation between the normal cells who do not lyse versus those who are impacted by the conditions like PNH where cells are easily lysed. Aside from sugar water hemolysis test, other laboratory examinations that may be used for the diagnosis of PNH would be sucrose lysis test and HAMS acid hemolysis test. All these three examinations rely on the fact that the red blood cells are vulnerable to hemolysis because of their sensitivity to complement fixation. There are two methods for the sugar water hemolysis test. The first method is where the hemolysis is simply observed visually, while the second method is where the optical density of the hemolysis is measured using a spectrophotometer. The first method is a simpler method that uses whole blood for the screening test, while the second method is more of a confirmatory method compared to the first one. This is the procedure for the first method where citrated whole blood is used as a specimen. A 1 is to 9 mixture of whole blood and sugar water solution is prepared in a test tube. The sugar water solution is made up of 9.5 grams commercial granulated sugar and 100 ml distilled water. This mixture should be incubated for 30 minutes and after 30 minutes should be centrifuged for 5 minutes at 1500 rpm. After centrifugation, observe for the supernatant. The absence of the hemolysis would mean a negative result, while the presence of hemolysis would mean a positive result. If the result is positive, there should be further testing for confirmatory method, which is the sucrose lysis test or the HAMS test. For the second method, these are the different materials needed. The sugar water solution, which is the same as the one used in the first method, cyan met hemoglobin reagent like the Drabkin's reagent, test tubes and pipettes, and lastly, a spectrophotometer. For the procedure of the second method, we have to prepare the blood sugar mixture first. In a test tube, transfer 1.8 ml of the sugar water solution and then we add 0.2 ml of the patient's blood. Mix this properly by inversion and then incubate it for 30 minutes at room temperature. While waiting for the 30 minute incubation time of the blood sugar mixture, prepare two more test tubes and label them as total and test respectively. On each test tube, add 9.5 ml of Drabkin's reagent. After 30 minutes of incubation of your BS mixture, mix it properly and transfer 0.5 ml of this mixture into the test tube labeled as total. Mix properly and incubate this for 10 minutes at room temperature. After 10 minutes, read using a spectrophotometer. Going back to the blood sugar mixture, after transferring for the total test tube, Incubate it again at room temperature for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, centrifuge the test tube for 5 minutes at 1,500 RPM. And the supernatant from the centrifugation should be transferred to the test tube labeled as test. 
Mix it properly and incubate at room temperature for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, read using a spectrophotometer. After reading with the spectrophotometer, this is how we interpret results. A less than or equal to 5% hemolysis is inconsequential or negative, but a negative test does not rule out P and H because there can be false negative results that can happen. A 6 to 10% hemolysis is borderline or questionable, and they may be found in conditions like leukemia, aplastic anemia, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, megaloblastic anemia, and myelofibrosis. A more than 10% hemolysis is positive and diagnostic for P and H. And this positive test can further be confirmed using the HAMS test. Next would be the false positives and the false negatives. These are the different causes of a false positive. First is the severe anemia of a patient because hemolysis may occur even if the patient does not have P and H. Next would be hemolyzed specimen. Causes of hemolyzed specimen would be from a traumatic top or from incorrect venipuncture methods and the use of defibrinated blood. Hemolysis happens in the defibrination process. That's why it is recommended that before testing, a small portion of the specimen sample should be centrifuged so that we can check for the presence or absence of hemolysis. For the false negatives, one cause may be the lack of complement in the patient plasma. Calcium and magnesium are ions that are used in the complement-mediated hemolysis. Therefore, a low level of these would cause a false negative. The test should be performed within two hours. If not, a false negative may occur. Lastly, blood transfusion can dilute the percentage of P and H cells, resulting in a false negative result. Let's differentiate the other tests used for the diagnosis of P and H. First is the sucrose hemolysis test, which is sometimes misidentified as the sugar water test because both tests use sucrose or sugar in the procedure. There are differences though. For example, in this procedure, the red blood cells should be washed before using. We also add an ABO compatible normal serum in the procedure and the sucrose solution should be adjusted to be isotonic with the use of saline. The principle is the same, but this time, the medium is of low ionic strength so that the complement binding can be strengthened. This activates the classical pathway of the complement system. The sucrose hemolysis test is more sensitive, affordable, and straightforward compared to the HAMS test, but a disadvantage is that it is less specific. The next test is the acidified serum test, which is also known as the HAMS test. This is also the same with the sucrose hemolysis test, but this, but this time with the addition of two more reagents. First is the serum, which is heat inactivated at 56 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, and the addition of acid or hydrochloric acid to provide an environment with a pH of 6.8. The principle is the same, but the red blood cells should be more fragile because of the addition of mild acid. This test was named after Dr. Thomas H. Ham, developed during the 1930s. A positive acidified serum test may also be positive for congenital dyserythropoietic anemia type 2. This test is less sensitive and specific compared to the flow cytometry. Next, we have flow cytometry, which is the definitive diagnosis for PNH. This is a very sensitive, reliable, and an accurate test. That's why it is considered as the gold standard test for the diagnosis of PNH. The principle of this test uses monoclonal antibodies CD55 and CD59 that target the GPIAP with fluorescent binding of the RBC. Between CD55 and CD59, CD55 is highly expressed. Historically, to diagnose PNH, we should perform sugar water tests or sucrose hemolysis tests and acidified serum tests. 
but these tests are now obsolete and they are replaced with a more advanced and reliable and accurate test which is the flow cytometry. And that is all for this video. Thank you very much for watching.